one of the most powerful things in Messiah's um, toolbox is the ability to reuse animation. To demonstrate that, I'm just going to create a very simple animation where this sphere um, moves to the value of 1 on its x at frame 50. So at frame 0, it is 0. So there's my animation from 0 to 50. It moves along one unit. So let's create a motion clip of that awesome animation. To do that you go into Compose, click on Tracks, and then there's this Record block here. And I've already, since the last time I tried to record this, it's, it's named it Ball Moving Along X. That's a good name, so we'll keep that. Um, the source is Selected Items. Um, when you have Selected Items selected, um, when you record a clip, it will automatically create a group of the selected items. So to make this more natural as to what we would do norm normally, what you do is you create a new group of the item that we want to animate. So here's the new group and it is the ball group. And so here in Compose we're going to click on current group so when it records it it will use the ball group here. Now we're going to want it to do all channels, we're going to want to do animation but we don't want it to auto create a track just because we want, I want to demonstrate how to do that um, but when you do it later, when you do it yourself you probably want to leave that on to save you a few steps. Uh, we'll do it within the range, the range deals with the 0 to 50 that we have set here it'll clip out or, or copy anything within that range here if the an, uh, animation has something beyond there, you may want to consider uh, using all keys. And we're going to do the motion type of recording we're going to use is local keys. Uh, baked motion deals with more complex, um, like if you have procedural animation and stuff like that. So let's uh, record by using the copy option. And what that does is it creates a new clip it's called ball moving along X and if we look at the values within the clip you can see in its X position there is a value of 1 on frame 50 and it is the second key and here in animate we have the same animation underneath here so um, here in our track editor we can select the ball group and create a new track and a track is kind of like you're creating a new timeline in a video editing program a track is something that we can place clips onto and so we'll just click on that track and choose the ball moving along X clip and pick add and it'll add it to your timeline and because we have the equal sign here on the way it overlays underneath the animation below it, the animation will look exactly the same. So as we scrub on 0, it'll be 0, and along here it'll be set to a value of 1, and that is because um, it is replacing or equal uh, the motion underneath. And to demonstrate how that works, we're going to change that to plus. And so now as we move along it's going to accumulate the value of 1 in the motion clip with the value that we have underneath here in the base animation. So that's what that setting does here. Um, another thing we can play with and look at um, is turning it off. So here we have 2, it's set to a value of 2 but if we turn the clip off it goes back to its value of 1 because that's what the base animation does. So let's for our, just for demonstration purposes delete the base animation underneath. So now nothing is happening underneath here. But we'll turn on the motion clip and set that back to equals so that we can play with some settings as to how to deal with the, tr with the clip once it's on the track. One of the things you can do is to left click drag on this little red X here red notch on the top right and we've made the animation 
twice as long so it now goes to frame 100 and we can also change the um, speed with which it, it travels along the clip so we can create uh, keyframes along here um, that demonstrate that and you can even go backwards in time and so now as it travels along it we've messed up time we've sped up and slowed down this clip so we'll just delete those keys and another option that, that we can demonstrate let's make this turn this back to it being 50 frames long and then if you right click drag you can actually have it repeat and how you have it repeat is based on how you toggle this little button here right now it's set to loop it's loop back to the beginning so as I scrub as it gets to frame 50 it'll loop back and start again so we'll loop back but we can change that this one it'll now oscillate so it'll go all the way to value of 1 and then as it reloops it'll go back to back and forth and this one is an accumulation so as it gets to a value of 1 on frame 50 it'll keep going to a value of 2 on frame 100 because it's accumulated and this is what you use for things like walk cycles and stuff and then this one is it'll go through the animation once and then go back to the beginning frame of the clip so we'll scrub and you'll see that pop it pops back to the beginning and then does nothing more and this one the last one it'll go to the end of the clip and then just stay there so the one you probably want to use the most is just the, the repeating motion motion um, let's see what else you can you can animate the influence of that the clip has on the underlying animation uh, since we already deleted the underlying animation that's kind of hard to demonstrate but that's what that does um, if you want to see all the clips that you have recorded they're all available here and at any time you can save your current clip um, currently selected clip and you can load them to create a library of motions um, that's pretty much the very basics of how motion clips work obviously when you have a character um, with character and animation you, you it's going to be more com complex with groups and that's where you're going to be wanting to use the matching if you want to move animation from one character to another and then and the names of the, the bones are different you would want to use use the matching as well but other than that uh, that's how you create clips uh, or oh, let me show you how to create a new track you just select on the group and you create a new track and then you can add a clip to that track and click add and um, if we put, do them both at a cumulative you can see uh, you know the results there so it's like a non-linear editor where you can blend in like if I wanted this to to blend in I'd scrub along here and I'd uh, create a new keyframe and then when it goes to here I'd create a new keyframe and then put the value of it to zero and so it's, it's blending in the transition is blending between the two so just and this line right here shows you that influence um, you know depending on which which one you have on and so its influence is, is going down uh, as as it as this one fades in hopefully that made sense <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's the very basics of how motion clips work and uh, hopefully I'll, as I create more advanced video tutorials this will help you give give you that foundation that you need to understand the more complex sets